everyone and welcome to Sajiko's GT lessons on CNC3. I'm Megan from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services and in today's lesson we're going to be putting our comprehension skills to the test. So let's get into it. Sajiko GT lessons brought to you courtesy Sajiko, wise financial thinking for life, Dairy Dairy the Milky Milk and Small Talk. Right, so we know when we're doing a comprehension, of course we have the steps that we always follow. We read through the comprehension, read through the questions, read through the comprehension again, pulling out the important points, and then of course using those important points to answer our questions. So we're gonna start with a passage, and we're gonna read it through, and carry out the rest of the steps that follow, all right? So, John and Tina were extremely excited to go on a weekend camping trip with their summer camp. They had been planning this trip for the last month and it was finally here. John made sure to pack his favorite jacket in case it got cold and Tina decided to pack an old compass her grandfather gave her just in case they got lost in the woods. Two young people, sorry, the two young people met up with the rest of their camp friends and the counselors and got onto the bus. The ride lasted about an hour until finally they pulled in to a dirt parking lot. Time to set up your tents, kids, said the lead counselor. Find a spot and let's start camping. John picked up the tent bag and led Tina to a small clearing amongst the trees. The pair set up the tent just in time for the night's bonfire where they roasted puffy marshmallows for gooey s'mores. John, I want to go for a walk to the river. Come with me, said Tina. They both walked towards the river and sat at its bank. Crack! A loud sound suddenly echoed in the quiet nighttime and the two young people immediately became nervous. What do you think it was? asked Tina as she hid behind John for protection. John decided to slowly make his way towards the noise and very carefully, he parted the bush from which he believed the sound to have come from. Oh no, yelled Tina as a small dark shadow jumped at her from the bush. John started to laugh and bent down to pick up the small creature. Tina, it's just a puppy. She bent down as well to pet the puppy and laughed uncontrollably with her friend. I can't believe I was scared of a puppy. John cradled the puppy as the two friends headed back to the campsite. Guess what we found, announced Tina as they returned. We have a new camper. All right, so now let's read through the questions and try to understand what, what each question is asking us, all right? So the first question says, how long were John and Tina planning the camping trip? All right, so we know when we're looking at this question, we're dealing with time, because they're asking us how long. Number two, what did each child pack and why? So we have to identify one thing that each child packed, and then of course they ask us why. So we know we have to give a reason um, for the child packing those items. Number three, how long was the bus ride there? So again, asking us about time, asking us how long something was, how long it took. Number four, what is the first thing they did when they arrived? So this is asking us what action or what activity took place when they first arrived. Number five, why do you think the two young children became nervous? So we have to use our detective skills to try and find out what hints or clues might tell us why the two young children suddenly became nervous. Number six, where did the sound come from? All right, so we have to try and locate where exactly the sound came from in the story. Number seven, what was making the noise? So what was the source of that sound? All right, what did it end up what, sorry, what ended up coming out of the bush that day? And then of course, number eight, who was the new camper? So you have to identify who the new camper was. All right, so we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, we're going to pull apart the important parts of the story and of course, answer our questions.
Insurance doesn't have to be complicated. Give us a call today. It's a perfect ball and he's out. I wish your dreams take flight. Let your determination always shine bright. Hard work is the key. I'll achieve my dreams. Just you watch and see. Fill up on possibility. Hey, what's up everybody? Ken Simmons here, owner and personal trainer at Goodfit. And we understand that this time is a very stressful one in this COVID-19 pandemic. Most of you are complaining you cannot go to the gym. Hence the reason we're going to bring the action right to you in the comfort of your own home. So join us Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 5.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. right here on CNC3 on all of our associated social media platforms for the quarantine grid pump, okay? So join me, Ken Simmons, and let's pump together and stay fit and healthy, all right? Stay home, stay safe, and let me get healthy. Yeah, man, join me. Welcome back to Sajiko's GT Lessons on CNC3. I'm Megan from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services and in today's lesson we're going over some comprehension pieces. We're starting off with a passage. We just read through the passage, ran through the questions very quickly and now we are going to read through the passage again, this time pulling out all the information that we think is important to help us answer the questions. Alright, so let's get started on that. So. John and Tina were extremely excited to go on a weekend camping trip with their summer camp. They had been planning this trip for the last month. All right, so one of the questions asks us how long they were planning this trip for the last month. It w and it was finally here. John made sure to pack his favorite jacket in case it got cold and Tina decided to pack an old compass her grandfather gave her just in case they got lost. All right, so that was the two items that the children packed and of course the reason that they packed each of those items. The two young people met up with the rest of their camp friends and the counselors and got onto the bus. The ride lasted about an hour. All right, so one of the questions asked us how long the ride was. It was an hour. They pulled into a dirt parking lot. Time to set up your t our tents, kids, said the lead counselor. All right, so this, when they got there and they pulled up to the parking lot, the first thing they did was set up their tents and find a spot so they could start camping, all right? John picked up the tents the tent bag and led Tina to a small clearing amongst the trees. The pair set up the tent just in time for the night's bonfire where they roasted puffy marshmallows for gooey s'mores. John, I want to go for a walk to the river. Come with me, said Tina. They both walked towards the river and sat at, at its bank. Crack! A loud sound suddenly echoed in the quiet nighttime and the two young people immediately became nervous. So when they heard the cracking sound or the crack sound, they became nervous. What do you think it was? asked Tina as she hid behind John for protection. John decided to slowly make his way towards the noise and very carefully he parted the bush from which he believed the sound came from. All right, so the sound could have come from the bush. Oh no, yelled Tina as a small dark shadow jumped at her from the bush. John started to laugh and bent down to pick up the small creature. Tina, it's just a little puppy. She bent down as well to pet the puppy and laughed uncontrollably at, with her friend. 
I can't believe I was scared of a puppy. So the puppy is what was making the sound. The puppy is what jumped out of the bush. John cradled the puppy as the two friends headed back to the campsite. Guess what we found, announced Tina as they returned. We have a new camper. So uh, he was holding the puppy and that's when they realized they had a new camper. And the new camper was the puppy that they found. All right, so let's answer these questions. Now, incomplete sentences. So the first one again asks us, how long were John and Tina planning the camping trip? So if we go up to the story and look at all the points that we pulled out, the first point that we pulled out was that they were planning the trip for a month, all right? So that is the first answer to our question. So we can say that John and Tina were planning the camping trip. for a month. Number two, what did each child pack and why? All right, so again, we're going up to the story. So we have, we used the last month and now we have that John packed his favorite jacket in case it got cold and Tina packed an old compass in case they got lost in the woods, all right? So we're gonna put that in a, in a complete sentence now. John packed his favorite jacket in case it got cold ah and Tina packed her old that doesn't look like an O and an L compass in case they got lost. All right, so I used up all three lines there. Number three, how long was the bus ride there? Again, going up into the story. So we've used all this information so far. So we're on to the second paragraph now. And in the second paragraph, the story tells us that the ride lasted about an hour. All right, so we're going to see the bus ride there lasted about an hour. Number four, what is the first thing they did when they arrived? So reading the story, all right, based off of what the camp counselor, the lead counselor is telling them and looking at the actions of John and Tina, the first thing they did when they arrived was find a spot and, and set up their tents, all right? So we're gonna put that into a complete sentence to answer the question. The first thing they did when they arrived was pick a spot and set up their tents. Number five, why do you think the two young children became nervous? So looking back at the story, 
the two young children became nervous when they heard a suspicious crack or when they heard a crack and they weren't sure what that sound was. So of course they were kind of scared. They heard this noise while they were alone in the woods and they became quite nervous, all right? So we have to put that into a sentence. So, the two young children became nervous when they heard a strange crack, right? Because that's what we use from this story. Number six, where did the sound come from? So again, looking at the story, based off of all the things that we have pulled out, we can say that the sound came from the bush because John decided to slowly make his way towards the noise and very carefully parted the bush from which he believed the sound to have come from. All right, so John who was there heard the sound coming from the bush. So we can say that the sound came from the bush. Number seven, what was making the noise? All right, so after they heard that crack and John decided to investigate, a little puppy came straight out of the bush, all right? So we can say that the puppy made that noise. Maybe he stepped on a branch, and that's why they heard the crack. The puppy was making the noise. And number eight, who was the new camper? And based off of everything that we would have read again in that story, in that last paragraph, the new camper, the puppy was also the new camper, all right? Oh gosh, I put a... <laughs> question mark, where question mark wasn't supposed to be. All right, so we can say that the new camper was the puppy because John and Tina brought the puppy back to the campsite. All right, so we read through twice, pulling out the different information, and of course, using this information to answer our questions, all right? So we're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, we're gonna look at a poem. Life moves fast. Be prepared with Sagicor. Learn more at sagicorlife.com. The Ministry of Social Development and Family Services says additional food guard support will be provided via top-up for an initial three-month period beginning in mid-April 2020. An amount of $150, $300, or $400 will be paid depending on the size of the family. This was a production of the Ministry of Communications. 
this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it. Mm, like to know everything, what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth. And, you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the communities. And I even saw my community featured, and I was proud. But the Guardian. 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 The Guardian is my first choice. Hi, everyone. I'm Chef Raval. Join me all this week for Cooking in Quarantine on CNC3. Brought to you by Crick's Vital Supplies, Target Corn Beef, and French's Ketchup. and welcome back to Sajiko's GT Lessons on CNC3. I'm Megan from Elevate L Tutoring Services. And in today's lesson, we've been going over some comprehension pieces. Now, we just looked at a passage where we read through, looked at the questions, read through the passage again, pulling out the important information, and of course, using that information to answer those questions. Now, we're gonna follow those same steps with the poem that I have here, and we're gonna answer the questions that follow. So the title of this poem is Ice Cream. My name is Lisa. I have a few treats to please you. There are many flavors in my freezer you have never seen before. 40 delicious creations. Try your very best to put your taste buds to the test. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry and mocha, mint chip and rocky road, Berry Blast and Bubblegum Overload. After you taste one flavor from my store, you will surely ask for more. All right, so that is the poem. And now we're, of course, going to look through the questions. So who is the poet? So this is asking us who, and of course, we will answer. This is a person, or this is somebody mentioned in the story, all right? So this is asking who? And of course the poet is the person that writes the story, all right? Or the poem, sorry. <laughs> Number two, what does she have in her freezer? So we have to look for the item that she has in her freezer based off of what we read in the poem. How many flavors does she have? So this we are looking for a number. What number of flavors does she have? List three flavors from the poem. So of course we're looking at three, not two, not four, not one, not ten. Three flavors and of course they have to come from the poem. So we're going to take examples of flavors that were mentioned in the poem. We're not going to come up with three flavors off the top of our head. Number five, when will you ask for more? So at what point will you ask for more ice cream? Number six, why do you think you will ask for more? So using your interpretations and your hints and clues that you would have picked out from the poem, why do you think that you would ask for more ice cream? Number seven, what is the main idea of the poem? So what is the entire idea of the poem? What is the poem talking about? This is basically like a little brief summary of the poem, all right? And number eight, what are two rhyming words from the poem? And now we've already discussed that rhyming words are two words that rhyme or have similar sounding endings. So we have to go ahead and pick up, pick out, sorry, two rhyming words. So we're gonna go through the story, not the story, the poem again and pull apart all the important information. So the title of the poem is Ice Cream. This can be very important to us, especially with, when looking at the main idea, because you know I always say that the main idea and the title go hand in hand. My name is Lisa, all right? I have a few treats to please you. There are many flavors in my freezer you have never seen before. So one of the questions asks us as well, what the freeze, what is in her freezer? So there are many flavors 
of ice cream, obviously, because that's what the poem is about, in my freezer. 40 delicious creations, so 40 different flavors. Try your very best to put your taste buds to the test. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, mocha, mint chop chocolate, sorry, not mint chocolate, mint chip and Rocky Road, berry blast and bubble gum overload. All right, so we have what, a few flavors mentioned here. Of course, we are only gonna look for three of them. So one, two, three, I'm picking those three. You could choose another three but once we use only three, because that's all that they asked for. After you taste one flavor from my store, you will surely ask for more. All right. So all of this here, this entire little piece here, tells us why we would ask for more. All right, and of course, also we are looking for rhyming words. So, Best and test, road and overload, store and more. And there are a few that we can pick out, but of course we're just looking for two rhyming words, all right? So let's answer these questions now. Who is the poet? So the poet, which is somebody that is right, the person that is writing the poem, and if that poem is, that person, sorry, the poet, is saying that my name is Lisa, then it's safe to say that Lisa is the poet. All right? All right, and the poet is the person that writes the poem. Number two, what does she have in her freezer? So we're going back to the poem to identify what she has in her freezer. So there are many flavors in my freezer, but we're not just gonna put she has many flavors in her freezer. We have to identify that it's many flavors of ice cream. And we know this because the whole poem talks about ice cream. All right, so she has many flavors in her flavors of ice cream. I literally just said it. Of ice cream in her freezer. All right, number three. How many flavors does she have? So again, we have to go back to the poem to find out this information. And we can see that she says she has 40 delicious creations. So that means she has 40 different flavors in her freezer. She has 40 flavors of ice cream. Number four, list three flavors from the poem. <clears throat> so we have a whole stanza in the poem and we know that the stanza of the poem is the, is like the paragraph of a story. So we have an entire stanza dedicated to listing the different flavors in her freezer. So we can pick out three of those different flavors right now. So I already chose chocolate, vanilla and mocha. All right, so three flavors from the poem are chocolate, vanilla, and mocha. Number five, when will you ask for more? All right, so you will ask for more after you have, after you taste one flavor from her store. All right, it says it right here. You will ask for more 
after you taste one flavor from her store? So that would be the answer to that question. After you taste one flavor from her store, you will ask for more. Number six, why do you think you will ask for more? All right. So if we look at these stanza here, after you taste one flavor from my store, you will surely ask for more. And of course, we have to come up now with our own reason for why we think we will ask for more. So think about it. If you put yourself in that position or in, in that situation where you taste one flavor of ice cream from um, a store, what would make you want more? What would make you ask for more? Obviously, if the ice cream is delicious, if it tastes so good. All right. So, you will ask for more because it tastes so good or it tastes so delicious that you you just want more and more all right number seven what is the main idea of the poem of course I always say that the main idea has something to do with the title of the poem in this case, the title of the poem is Ice Cream. So, when we read the poem, the main idea is ice cream, but it's not just ice cream. It is this woman, Lisa, or this girl, Lisa, and all the different flavors of ice cream that she has in her freezer and how great her ice cream store is, all right? So, the main idea of the poem is Lisa's ice cream store and the lovely delicious things that come in it and then of course there are two rhyming words that we have to pull out from each poem which we already pulled out earlier so overload and road test and best so we're gonna pick two two rhyming Words are best and test. All right, so we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to look at a graphic. Sir, we are doing a survey for Diana Powerman. We want to know why you use Diana Powerman's. Because no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I must always be my best. And our apartments have made me that way. Well, my feeling and our apartments right now, you see, everybody around is like it for it's good for, for the breath, you know, it's good for the cool, right, it's good for any other thing. Because it's refreshing. Apartments by Diana. According to the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services, your child's name must be on the listing of the Ministry of Education's school feeding program in order to receive temporary food support. Please remember, this is only for families who are not already on food support. This was a production of the Ministry of Communications. Hi, I'm Reverend Stella King. And my pastor, Dr. Benny King. We're the pastors of Chapel of Joy, a dynamic ministry, ministering joy to our troubled world. You can check us out on CNC3 every Tuesday, 5 o'clock. Check us out on YouTube, our Facebook site, as well as our website. And you will be blessed. Yes, you will be blessed. God loves you and God wants you to know that your breakthrough is just around the corner. So don't give up. You have done 
The Ministry of Social Development and Family Services says additional food card support will be provided via top-up for an initial three-month period beginning in mid-April 2020. An amount of $150, $300, or $400 will be paid depending on the size of the family. This was a production of the Ministry of Communications. This is more than just music. This is where you find the best of TNT. This is. This is more than just a vibe. This is where Bollywood gets a twist. This is more than just energy. This is Bhangra and Indie Pop 2. This is the mix. This is the life. Lock on or log on now. Sangeet 106.1 FM. This is authentic East Indian radio. This is us. Empower yourself from home or anywhere you go. Stay informed. The Digital Guardian. In light of the COVID-19 restrictions, we are giving you the nation's leading digital newspaper free for 30 days to all new and existing subscribers on your iOS or Android devices. It's easy for you to access your free 30 days Digital Guardian subscription offer. Simply go to our website at www.guardian.co.tt slash covered and fill out account info and then log in to Guardian app or website for your free 30-day subscription. Download your free 30-day subscription now. Tune in to Passages brought to you by Balgroves on CNC3 Television Monday to Friday at 8.20 a.m. and weekends at 10 a.m. Look out for us in your daily Guardian newspapers and on the web at balgroves.com slash passages. Balgroves, celebrating life's precious memories since 1888. Okay, stop. Is there a problem? Yes, you. It's time for you to go. Wait, did I do something wrong? Not yet, but you are getting very close. Don't miss Bob Hart's Abby Shola, Sundays at 7.30 p.m., only on CNC3. COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. Welcome back to Sajiko's GT Lessons on CNC3. I'm Megan from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services. And in today's lesson, we've been going over some comprehension pieces. We've gone through a passage, a poem, and now we're going to look at a graphic. So with our graphic, we are going to carry out the same steps that we always do. We read through the piece, read and understand the questions, and then read through the piece a second time, just pulling out all the important information and of course, using that information to answer the questions. So let's look at this flyer here. Field trip. All Standard 5 students will be attending a field trip to the Emperor Valley Zoo on Friday the 17th of April. Students must arrive at school for 7.30 a.m. The bus will leave school at 8 a.m. and will return at 2 p.m. Make sure that you bring your lunch on the trip. Students must have a signed permission slip from a parent or guardian to attend. All right, so let's look at the questions. What class is mentioned in the flyer? All right, so they're asking us basically what class is attending the field trip? Number two, where are the children going? So this question is asking us where the field trip is or what the... what location the field trip is all right number three what time must the children arrive at school so we have to give a time that was stated in the flyer for the children to arrive at school number four what must they bring on the trip so what is something that was highlighted in the flyer that they have to bring with them um, on this trip to the zoo 
And number five, what do they need to attend? So what is highlighted in the flyer, what piece of information or what physical thing do they need to allow them to attend this trip? All right, so let's answer these questions now after we pull out the important information. So the whole flyer is about a field trip and it's a field trip for this standard five class to attend the Emperor, a field trip to the Emperor Valley Zoo. It's gonna take place on Friday the 17th of April and all students must arrive at school for 7.30 a.m. The bus will leave school at 8 a.m. and return at 2 p.m. Make sure that you bring your lunch on the trip and students must have a signed permission slip from a parent or guardian to attend this field trip. All right, so let's answer the questions now. What class is mentioned in the flyer? If we look at the information on the flyer, it says that a standard, that all standard five students will be attending. So this means that the standard five class is mentioned in the flyer. The standard five class is mentioned in the flyer. Number two, where are the children going? So what is this field trip about? Where are they going to? It says in the flyer that the field trip is to the Emperor Valley Zoo. So the children are going to the Emperor, oops, that needs to be in a capital letter. Valley Zoo. Number three, what time must the children arrive at school? So again, looking at the information mentioned in the flyer, the students must arrive at school for 7.30 a.m. or in other words, before 7.30 a.m. So they expect by the time 7.30 rolls around, all students are in school. So, children must arrive at school before 7.30 a.m. Number four, what must they bring on the trip? So again, we look at the flyer and the information given and it says that they must make sure to bring their lunch on the trip. All right, it says it's in this line here. So students, must bring their lunch on the trip. And number five, what do they need to attend? So students must have a signed permission slip from a parent or guardian to attend. So we can literally take that same line and put it right back and use it as our answer. Students must have a signed permission slip from a parent or guardian to attend. All right, so we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, we're gonna continue with the lesson.
Insurance doesn't have to be complicated. Give us a call today. This is more than just music. This is where you find the best of TNT. This is. This is more than just a vibe. This is where Bollywood gets a twist. This is. This is more than just energy. This is Bhangra and Indie Pop 2. This is the mix. This is the life. Lock on or log on now. Sangeet 106.1 FM. This is authentic East Indian radio. This is us. COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. The fact that they ask the questions, those challenging questions that no other media house would ask. So, you know, shed light on those things that are in the dark, those stories that no one else wants to cover. Um, I grew up reading The Guardian, actually. It's a household name. About The Guardian, one thing that I like, the human interest stories have increased. The city investigated pieces on the human trafficking. I find that very interesting. Sam, you go more in depth. On sports, especially local sports, and that's one of my highlights for The Guardian. Yeah, I've been in Guardian since The Guardian started, come, started coming out, started working. I was a newspaper man. <laughs> Could the stories that are being covered are well detailed and we get more facts. At this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it. Mm, like to know everything, what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth and you know, they, they're challenging the government to, to make things better. Me in particular, of recently, the last two, three months, I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the communities. And I even saw my community featured, and I was proud. The Guardian. The Guardian. Guardian. The 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 Guardian is my first choice. Please come and up now. Anyway, anyhow. No girl getting low, cause I had ten drinks in a row. Head bad and a proud. Real mass in a crowd. Pipes high like a crowd. Hey, what's up everybody? Ken Simmons here, owner and personal trainer at Gridfit. And we understand that this time is a very stressful one in this COVID-19 pandemic. Most of you are complaining you cannot go to the gym. Hence the reason we're going to bring the action right to you in the comfort of your own home. So join us Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 5.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. right here on CNC3 on all of our associated social media platforms for the quarantine grid pump. Okay, so join me, Ken Simmons, and let's pump together and stay fit and healthy, all right? Stay home, stay safe, and let me get healthy. Yeah, man. Join me. We don't have no gun and no blade. We don't party in faith. Dirty like we don't babe. Don't have no pride and no shame. I don't care who call them in. No, no, no. Chant it again. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest-growing, most subscribed, and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. 
COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. What is the virus about? Why is it spreading so quickly? What can you do to prevent it? This is a serious virus and only we can help prevent it from spreading. Find out how and more tips on flattening the curve on Ask the Doctor every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We will answer your questions live with our special guest, Dr. Joel Tiluxing. Ask the Doctor only on CNC3. everyone and welcome back to Sajiko's GT Lessons on CNC3. I'm Megan from Elevate Ed Tutoring Services and in today's lesson we've been looking at the different comprehensions that you would see in an SEA exam. Alright, so we looked at a passage, a poem and a graphic piece and that is the order that these comprehensions usually come in in the SEA exam. So you would first have a passage, then a poem, and then of course your graphic piece, which could be a flyer or perhaps a TV guide or something along those lines, all right? And when we are looking at these comprehensions, I just wanna remind everyone about the steps that I suggest you take just to make sure that you can answer the questions effectively, all right? So it's really important to read the comprehension the entire passage poem or graphic piece and make sure you understand what that piece is speaking about before you begin to answer your questions the next thing you should do is read through all the questions and understand what each question is asking you this helps just for when you are pulling out important information and also you may answer a question so let's for instance say that question four asks you something um, to list something but you go on and you list maybe too much information and then in question five they ask you for a reason why you list that listed all those things and that answer you had already put in question four all right so it's important to read through each question make sure that you don't um, you understand what each question is asking you and of course then we read through the story the poem or the graphic piece a second time this time just pulling out all the important information that you think will be good clues or hints to the answers for the questions and then of course you can go ahead and use the information that you pulled to answer each question and I always say to make sure I answer your questions in complete sentences unless you are instructed otherwise in the exam. All right, so that brings us to the end of our session for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Sajiko's GT Lessons. Sajiko GT Lessons brought to you courtesy Sajiko. Wise Financial Thinking for Life, Dairy Dairy the Milky Milk, and Small Talk. Therese, I've been looking for you. What for? To tell you that we deserve another chance. So will you marry me? Teresa, Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Only on CNC3. What a plan, Chirag. Let's get revenge together. Don't miss Mere Ashiki Tumse Hi weekdays at 6 p.m. and catch the marathon on Sundays at 11 a.m. only on CNC3. Niles, my eggs are all dried up. The gene pool is safe. <laughs> Don't miss Friends Rusher as the Nanny Sundays at 8.30 p.m. only on CNC3.